Are you cruising through life not always knowing what direction you were headed? Let Live On Purpose with Dr. Paul Jenkins be your guide. Live On Purpose will give you insights into your life and show you how you can become the driver and captain of it. No more aimless wandering. By learning the principles that govern happiness and wealth, you will be able to make personal progress that you have only dreamed possible. And now, here's your host, the shrink who expands your life, Dr. Paul. Welcome back, everybody, to Live On Purpose Radio. This is Dr. Paul, the shrink, who expands your life. And this is Live On Purpose Radio, the podcast that brings you the principles and the tools to help you take control of your life so that you are the driver of your life. And who better to drive your life than you? So I'm glad that you've joined us here again today. I hope that you're spreading the word. To those people in your life that you care about, that you want to see succeed, send them a link. Send them a link to this podcast. Let's get them into our community. And if you have suggestions or questions or other things that you would like me to address on this show, please send me an email, drpaul at liveonpurposeradio.com. And I would be happy to respond to your requests. As always, we're here in the Live On Purpose studios today with a great guest. And this guest is joining us as a friend of mine, an associate, a colleague, a, I don't know what I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Kerry Valerio. Say hello, Kerry. Hi, everybody. Glad to have you with me, Kerry. Great to be here. We've known each other for a while now. And uh, I first got to know you, I think it was in one of our marital magic events. Or or it may have been in another event where we both we were both attending. I can't remember for sure. It was uh, marital magic in uh, St. George. I think it was last March, April. It, okay, that's right. We did a little. I think it was a mission statement workshop. Yes, it was parental power and a mission statement workshop. And the parental power program too. That's right. We did both of those back to back. Yes. And uh, you and your wife Jody were there. Yes. And I got to know you folks a little bit. And then you joined us in the Caribbean last winter. Yes, we had a great time down there in the Western Caribbean. It was a fun time with everybody. That was a great producer cruise. Boy, that was something else, wasn't it? That was. We do have one coming up this winter. I want to give you listeners a heads up to that. I'm not sure when you're listening to this particular episode. But as we record it, today is the 5th of November, 2007. We've got about another four or five days to get people registered for that cruise. If you're interested, get get on the stick right now. Go to producerretreats.com, and uh, there's an 800 number there that you can call to get uh, linked up. But that was a fantastic experience. And, Carrie, I think about that a number of times, um, well, and quite frequently. Uh, not just because it was, you know, when we left Salt Lake City, it was 7 degrees, yeah, you I remember. remember. I remember, and I remember we had quite the storm going over the mountains headed to Chicago, and uh, it, oh. it 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 uh, it was definitely a bumpy ride. I remember it quite well. <laughs> That's right, and your wife really likes the airplane rides. <laughs> yeah, <too. laughs> not. <laughs> but then we got down there, and it was just wonderful weather down in the Caribbean, and oh, just, it was just it great. Was a great time. But you know, the thing that was the most valuable to me was being able to associate and exchange with other people people who had come with us, people who had the same goals and objectives to be successful and happy in their marriage, in their business, and uh, just a fantastic opportunity. Yeah, it was great. You and uh, you and Craig and the, the rest of the speakers just did a great job. It was, it was a wonderful time. Great vacation, relaxing, mm. got to meet a bunch of great people. It was, mm-hmm. it was great. I, I recommend it to anybody. Well, and we had so much fun. We're doing it again this year. So Yeah, that's great. So there I, we go. I apologized that, uh, that we won't be making it this year. But, and I uh, know you folks won't be with us this year. Yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're a little bummed about that. But uh, no, we'll do others. We'll, we'll, we'll do others, and uh, uh, my wishes will be with you guys for sure. <laughs> well, thank you. Sent, just to give a little more introduction of who you are. Uh, you, over the past couple of years, you've had an interesting ride. I have. I know that you were, um, you were working in the gas and oil industry. I did right after college for nine years. For nine years. Yeah. And so 
uh, you were actually doing just the the nuts and bolts physical labor of extracting and refining this stuff. You're you're an engineer. Yeah. You've uh, you've worked in the aerospace industry. Yes. You've done all kinds of interesting stuff. You want to give us just a brief overview snapshot of some of that experience. I want to give our listeners a feel for who you are. Sure. Um, I graduated from uh, the University of Utah with my degree in uh, chemical engineering and uh, got a job working in the Gulf of Mexico as a petroleum engineer. Hey, Carrie, um, have I ever shared with you what my very first college major was? What was it? You can guess now. Really? <laughs> chemical engineering. I didn't know that. It's true. Huh. Amazing. And, uh, yeah. So what happened? Well, I became a shrink. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Amazing. I, and I can tell that story later on probably, but uh, just an interesting little connection. I thought you might be interested. Huh. Yeah, no, I didn't know that. So, um, you, so anyway, yeah, I was uh, uh, down there as a, what's, what was called a field engineer. And that's uh, uh, basically you are, uh, I was working in what's referred to as production services. And that's basically when mm-hmm. the well is already drilled and they're getting mm-hmm. ready to start producing. So uh, I would run downhole electronics and do uh, formation evaluation to determine, you know, where's the best spot to, to start producing from and, and have all kinds of calculations and, mm. and pressure da- data and, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so we would do that um, and then do a lot of uh, correlating to seismic data so you can uh, look at old history, old well history to see how the water's moving and how the production's going and if it's hitting it, the rates that were previously calculated. And, mm-hmm. and on a reservoir level, you can make different calculations and, and that sort of stuff. So I did that for nine years. Um, so this had is some great time. It's, it's hard work. It's a lot of manual labor. You're away from home a lot. Um, mm-hmm. You make, you make good money for, you know, f- for your age and compared to the peers, mm-hmm. but uh, mm-hmm. you definitely earn it. Well, that's hard work. That it's definitely back breaking, steel and toes, coveralls, calluses, sledgehammers. That's, that's I the noticed kind of work something it is. else as you were talking too. You slipped into scientist mode, <laughs> and you started yeah. talking in terms that some people aren't even going to follow. Yeah, yeah, I apologize. I do that sometimes. But that's your background. That's yeah. where you're coming from. Yeah. You worked with NASA for a while. Yeah. Uh, after the oil business, I actually went to uh, work for the U.S. Army, and uh, I worked. Uh, there again as a chemical engineer uh, mm-hmm. for the army, mm-hmm. and uh, I designed chemical test chambers for uh, for the army, and I did that for about three years actually. And uh, that what made that job real fun and exciting was was uh, trying to build environmental chambers um, where you'd hit the extremes of the earth uh, and hold them to you know you'd hit have to make uh, uh, temperature chambers that could hold. Uh, 0. 0.1 degree C at uh, 240 degrees and uh, and minus 240 degrees and and mm. uh, give different um, chemicals and hold them in the parts per million and parts per billion range and it was just pushing the laws of physics to the to, edge for sure to do and, testing uh, and to do, to do testing for the army yeah mm. um, interesting uh, yeah so I did that for for about three years. And then I went to NASA, and I was at NASA for five years, mm-hmm. and I was a uh, senior engineering manager there on the uh, solid rocket motor program for the space shuttle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. one reason I wanted to go through some of this background with you, Carrie, is because some people, and, and I think a lot of our listeners may be aware of who you are because of your current business operations. Mm-hmm. You're one of the founding partners of an operation called Braycon mm-hmm. Incorporated, and... Uh, Tell us, tell us just a little bit about uh, your current business and what that is. Sure. Braycon is a, uh, uh, a multifaceted company. We have, I think it's seven uh, subsidiary companies, and then we have two uh, PPMs that we're currently running. Um, mm-hmm. But we have uh, a lot of different investment activities going on. We have some philanthropical uh, stuff going on through our foundation, which is what we'll mm-hmm. talk about a little mm-hmm. bit later. Um, but yeah, we have uh, uh, some commercial developments that we're involved in, a lot of oil and gas projects that we're involved in, some residential properties. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, we've just got a lot of great stuff going on. Well, and I know that you've taken on some projects to uh, provide education 
and training for people to to learn things about business, for example, or or investing, or yeah, uh, the markets and how all that works. Yeah, well, that's just another way uh, of me giving back. Um, you know, I mm-hmm. I I think that uh, there's no secrets, and so why should I hold any? I'll mm-hmm. I'll tell everybody. I'll give them every step, every book, every article, every contact I have. So they can have all of the information that I had, um, so they can make mm-hmm. their own their own choices and and possibly do what I've done or a or hundred times more. Now this is this is the thing I wanted to get to and and wind around to actually through this introduction. You you used the phrase "give back." It's a chance for you to give back. Here's and and here's all this experience that you've had and you've gone through these different jobs and different phases of your career and you were you were at various levels of economic prosperity could we say that yeah is that fair that's a fair statement and so uh some people who look at you today might might identify you as being wealthy or affluent and that's probably an accurate statement you've gone through a process to get there and what you're saying is that when, when you, well, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> because I almost said when you get to a certain point, it's important to give back. Well, we're going to talk a little bit in our next segment about what that point is. Sure. And it might not be the one that people think it is. Absolutely. But would you agree, Carrie, that one of the principles of prosperity and wealth and happiness is to give back? Absolutely. That is one of the most important principles by far is, is giving back, sharing what you know. Uh, you know, most people think in terms of giving back of, of uh, once they're wealthy and giving to big charities. But mm-hmm. uh, I want to talk about just giving back even to your family for them, supporting you during mm-hmm. your struggles and during your studies. And it's just very important. I don't think anyone who has any level of success in their life, and and may I add that that includes every one of you who's listening. If you don't realize your success, we need to chat a little bit because it's there. Exactly. Let's see if we can open your eyes to see it. And anyone who has any level of success in their life enjoys that and experiences it because of all of the contributions that they have received from others. Now... Of course, they have their unique talents and abilities that they've contributed. But it's not a do-it-yourself activity, is it? Absolutely not. It definitely requires a team and and surrounding yourself with great people. So, yeah, definitely. Not as as one-man show. That'll lay the context for what we're going to be talking about today. Stick with us. We'll be right back after this break. shrink to expand your life. I'm so glad that you've joined me for the Live on Purpose podcast. Please visit my website, drpaul.org. There you can subscribe to my weekly e-zine, Empower. Browse the events page to get connected with what's coming up or pick up some CDs or other great products. I also want to point you toward our sponsors, creationtreecoaching.com and producerretreats.com. This is Ross Kellen Moore of Creation Tree Coaching, and I've got two questions for you. Who are you? What do you want? You see, I've figured out that you and I can absolutely create anything that we really want. But to do that, we've got to be absolutely clear on who we really are and what we really want. So what do you want? More financial abundance? More fulfilling relationships? A higher level of health and fitness? How about finding your work that allows you to create massive value for others in the way that you love most? Welcome to Creation Tree Coaching. We are the world's premier provider of abundance, education, and resources. We are here to help you create the life you really love. Begin now at creationtreecoaching.com. Check out our live teleseminar classes and podcasts. Get to know our coaches and schedule a coaching session. Explore training for your business and employees. Welcome to Creation Tree Coaching and a whole new world that you create on purpose. If you have a pile of books you want to read growing faster than the pile of books you have read... 
Abundant Reading Systems course can help you. You'll learn a skill that allows you to read much more rapidly and you can retain more of what you read. I was actually quite surprised at my original benchmark this morning. To be able to do as well as I did, I almost tripled my benchmarks uh, and increased my comprehension, so I feel good about what I learned. Abundant Reading Systems brings you an all-new single-day speed reading workshop where you'll learn the principles behind effective reading and double your current reading speed, guaranteed. This belief started to grow inside of me that I thought, you know, I can really do this. I can read, you know, as fast as I let myself read and uh, ended up doubling my time, my speed reading time, which was really good. At the end of the day, I feel like I'm leaving feeling empowered. Register now for this event by calling 435-669-1206. That's 669-1206. Abundant Reading Systems. Reading at the speed of imagination. 669-1206. And when you dream, dream big. As big as the ocean. Carry the bumper music is talking about when you dream, dream big. I love that. I love that song. I uh, just got out of a seminar this weekend uh, called uh, the Landmark Advanced Course, mm. uh, part of the Landmark Education System. And that's one of their things is uh, creating possibilities. And mm-hmm. they want you to be creating big possibilities, things that will change the world. And, and uh, mm-hmm. one of their phrases is, we want to rock your world. And we want the world you're living in to be rocked as well as you be a rocker. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. I definitely recommend it to anybody. Um, go to landmark education, check out their stuff. It's great stuff. You know, and I've heard powerful things about landmark and it's actually on my list of stuff that, uh, that well, I'm, yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm working on, you know what I mean? I do. It's been so influential for me and my business that that's why, uh, mm-hmm. the largest section of my business is called is landmark. That's the company's name is landmark. Uh, oh. Landmark Venture Capital, and it's just because that's been so influential. Because in of the impact that that's had on you. Absolutely. Well, how much does it really help you or other people to play small? You it, know? Yeah. You know, I, I, I talk to a lot of people, and, and people get scared, afraid, and, and they have some fear, and mm-hmm. that's understandable, and we need everyone to work through that. But, uh, you know, you want to you think big. You want to create as much value for you can as you can for as many people as you can. And, and, uh, just definitely don't be afraid of thinking big and and have faith and confidence in yourself that you can, that you can be big. Now, Carrie, you've, you've played big and I think you're just getting started. Yeah. Yeah, I've told you that before. I think you're just getting started. (laughs) Yeah. It's, uh, uh, as you've mentioned before, sometimes, uh, you get butterflies and, and that's when you know you're stepping into the next league. But, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, that's, that's what makes life worth living. Mm-hmm. Did you always know that you'd be where you are now doing what you're doing? Is that something that you've always known or is that something that you had a process of, of developing and creating? I never, I had no idea that I would end up where I am right now when I was growing mm-hmm. up or even, mm-hmm. even while I was working at NASA, I didn't know. Um, mm-hmm. but I always knew I had faith in myself and confident in my abilities and, and I had great friendships and I have a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, feedback of, of just honesty and integrity mm-hmm. and courage. And so I knew I had the raw materials. I just had no idea that I would be where mm-hmm. I am right now. Mm-hmm. And here you are in a position where a lot of people look to you as an example of success, as yeah. an example of a leader. Is that weird? It is a little weird because I don't, <laughs> I, you know, I'm just me. I, I go home. I, I uh, play basketball in the driveway. I sit and mm-hmm. help my son just do his math homework. And, and my wife, uh, you know, make sure I put my dishes in the sink and, mm-hmm. and put away my clothes. And, you know, I'm just a normal guy. Which is the point I wanted to make. Here's a normal guy. And for those of you who are listening and thinking, well, you know, Dr. Paul, he kind of, he interviews these successful people, (laughs) you know. And it's true, I do. But you know what? I could bring anyone on this show and I could find a way to illuminate their success. I'm pretty confident that I could do that. Yeah, yeah, you do a good job of that. In fact, you know what? That's a challenge. And if you've got a story that you're not quite sure I could do that with, bring it on. (laughs) <laughs> Bring it on. Send me an email, Dr. Paul at liveonpurposeradio.com. We may set up a little episode with you 
<laughs> as the featured guest, and we will convince the world that you are successful. The, but you know what? That's not too hard for me, Carrie, and you know why? I believe that all of us live in abundance already. Oh, absolutely. It's a question of opening your eyes and seeing the abundance that is around you. Would you agree with that? I would absolutely agree. I, you know, people, it, it's kind of funny when I was first learning, uh, you know, the principles and, and different ways of, of attaining prosperity and financial abundance. I remember holding people up on, on such a pedestal like, oh man, it's so, it's so weird to be around these types of people. If and, I could be like yeah, them. Yeah, if I could someday be like them. And, and uh, you know, as I've, as I've uh, gotten further involved with it, I see they're just regular normal people. And mm -hmm. I mean, I'm as normal Joe as they get. I'm wearing a t-shirt and Levi's and, and tennis shoes today. I came mm -hmm. in my, in my truck. I, you know, I sit in pajamas and, and pop mm -hmm. popcorn and watch TV just like everybody else. Well, and it's been interesting for me over the last several years, I've kind of made a little private study of millionaires and multimillionaires because that used to, to represent to me something special. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And, and they're just in this other league, right? <laughs> well, as I got to know these people, and I, I can tell you, a large percentage of my personal and professional friends are in that category. And it's because as I've gotten to know them, they're just normal people. Yeah. And I realized that I have something to offer to them. Which would have baffled me before. Yeah, it's kind of funny. It's it's uh -huh. funny that you just don't, you think, you know, oh man, it's kind of like the, the pretty girl in high school mm -hmm. thing. It's like, it's just normal. Everyone's just normal. Just right. So let's get this idea out of our heads that there's something special about these people. I think the only thing special about someone who is successful and prosperous is that they have opened their eyes to the abundance that already surrounds them, and they have learned and applied principles in their life that help them to, to bring that abundance in, to capture it, and then to share it with others. And this is the question I wanted to bring up. At what point do you start to give back? Carrie, I know you've got thoughts about this. <laughs> I do. Um... I think it's important to give back all the time, but, but I think most people think they give back, but I think when you really start giving back is the instant you realize that you haven't been giving back. And I know that sounds mm. kind of a little twisted, but as soon as you think you should be giving back, it's time to be giving back. And, and, uh, you know, I know a lot of folks, um, mm. donate to their churches, but that's about where it ends for a lot of, for a lot of people. And, and, uh, I would just say that's by far just the beginning. And uh, mm -hmm. you just have to give back. And it's as soon as you realize you're not, that's when it's time. Sometimes I've noticed that, that those who are struggling to give back are still waiting to receive. Yeah. And they're waiting for something to come in that's going to help them to finally make it. And they, and they tell themselves, they deceive themselves by saying, well, when this or that finally happens, then I will be in a position to give back. When I finally have that six-figure income, then I will contribute. Then I will start to give back. Yeah. Do you see any problem with that kind of thinking? Yeah, that's backwards. Um, I think, uh, you know, as Kiyosaki says, you, you need to start thinking exactly opposite of, of everyone else. Um, and you're referring to Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah, yeah, He's the right. author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. For those of you who are not familiar with his work, I think you should be. Yeah. That's on your reading list. Yeah, he's, he's definitely been influential to me. And he says, just think exactly the opposite. Yeah, yeah, think exactly the opposite. Um, you know, the time to be giving back is, is when you only have $100 left in the checkbook. Um, it's the time to, when your kids don't have school clothes, it's time to go take, last year's school closed to the Deseret Industry or to the Salvation Army. Mm -hmm. Those are the times that you need to be giving back the most. Well, and the reason for this is, at least one of the reasons, this is a principle of prosperity. Exactly. It will help you to be prosperous. <laughs> 
Yeah. And and that's why you can't get that backward and really be successful. If you're always waiting until you're successful, until you give back, you're not going to be truly successful. No. If you learn that giving is one of the ways, one of the principles of prosperity, and you start that now with whatever resources you have, and please be aware that you have abundant resources at your disposal. And the only reason you don't realize that sometimes is because you're focusing on scarcity. You're noticing what you don't have. Well, start to pay attention to what you do and start giving that back. Exactly. Exactly. Think uh, there's so much abundance out there that, that uh, people just don't think what they've got. It's like even when you don't have anything financially, you still have your time. You still have your love. You still have your compassion. You, you can still go help your, your child while they're in school and go help the teacher grade papers or help some other kids with their reading assignments. Or you can go uh, volunteer at, at the uh, schools or churches for their, you know, their soup kitchens. And, and uh, you know, you always have something. Your, your human life value is, is always there. I just think a lot of people think, oh, I don't have any money in the checkbook, so what can I give? It's like, that's mm -hmm. when you can give the most. Well, the money in your checkbook is just the residual receipts, if you will, for the value you've already created for people, and you didn't do it through money. You did it through those things that you were mentioning, carry through your talents and your abilities and and just the way that you interact with people and what it is that you bring to relationships it it's your you use the word human life value yeah yeah that's big i think uh uh that's a big concept for people to understand that that human life value is what's there what you have that no one can take away and that is the the source and creator of all all material value and uh, mm -hmm. uh you know if you think about it in terms of of this topic your human life value you use it to create philanthropy you use it to create wealth in, in other people's lives just by, by going into a, a church group and talking about what you're doing or talking about what you know or services that you have or that mm -hmm. you can do. That's giving back. Stop withholding whatever it is you have that you already could offer. Exactly. What if you were walking down the street and the person coming up toward you was a little downcast, okay? eyes looking down, shoulders slumped a little bit. What could you do that would be as simple as smiling and greeting them? Exactly. And that'll just make their day. And you just gave them. back. You, you gave right. some of your human life value to increase their human life value. And it didn't cost you a thing. And you gave back and you created wealth in that, in that person's day, which is creating wealth. That's, that's the whole key is just give back. Create the wealth through exchange. The only thing that you have to offer is your human life value. Exactly. And you do that in business too, and that's why, why you can be successful in business. But it's the mindset that I, w I really want to drive home here. When you have that mindset, and when you start to get yourself to do that with your current resources, then your resources increase and the abundance begins to flow. Exactly. It's an amazing process. Stick with us. We're going to continue this discussion with Carrie Valerio on Live On Purpose Radio. In 1935, the federal government stopped the minting of pure silver dollars for general circulation. When the dollar coin returned back to circulation in 1971, it was the silverless Eisenhower dollar. This explains why your great-grandfather always had a silver coin in his pocket, and you never had. We're 180 degrees, and we have a pure silver coin with your name on it. If you're a young entrepreneur and feel like you're up for a challenge, contact us immediately at move180.com. That's move180.com. Click on the Contact Us link on the website and include the keyword silver in your information request. We will contact you shortly about how to retrieve your silver coin. While you're there, browse the website to learn more about us. Let's put some silver in your pocket at move180.com. If you live in the Utah County area, and if you like what you hear on this program, then this opportunity is for you. 
I am hosting a weekly mastermind group called Paradigm Insurance every Wednesday from 4 to 5.30 at my office. Call Eric at 801-221-0223 for more details. We prefer an abundant atmosphere, so please wipe your mind before entering. That's 801-221-0223. Relishing a week with your sweetheart in paradise. Spending that same week with other like-minded couples who live in abundance. Increasing your knowledge through powerful seminars geared toward helping you take your marriage to a new level. This is only a fraction of the value waiting for you on this year's Marital Magic Couples Cruise. Producer Retreats has teamed up with Dr. Paul and Craig Rollo to set the theme for this year's cruise as a more perfect union. Everything I Join us on January 26, 2008, as we visit the beautiful Eastern Caribbean Islands aboard Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas. Call 1-800-591-2432 to select your package and book your spot. You can get more details at ProducerRetreats.com. Limited cabins are available for this event, so book today by calling 1-800-591-2432. We'll see you on board. Welcome back. Hey, there's something that we haven't quite hit yet, Carrie, and I think we, I think we sort of introduced it a little earlier, <laughs> and it's this idea of exchange creates wealth. Exchange creates wealth. Now, this is a principle, and it's one that you and I have talked before about, and uh, that a lot of people are probably at least introduced to at some level. I want to explore that a little bit with you. Okay. We're talking here mostly about giving back. What, what would happen in your mind and from your experience, what would happen if people got really focused, just got really clear about what it is that they have to offer to the world? What do you think would start happening? I think when you start thinking in terms of that, that's when your mind starts to open up to the abundance that's there. Because as soon as you look at what you can offer, then you can look at what else that builds. So just say that you you are good at baking cakes. And okay. that's something you can offer. Um, then you bake cakes for your neighbors and for the neighborhood parties and you do it for churches. Okay, but as soon as you start thinking about it, and it's like, well, maybe I could bake wedding cakes and maybe I could make a wedding cake company and maybe I could franchise it or maybe I can do this or I could do that. Mm -hmm. And But it all started with what do you have to offer and what can I give the community and what can I give to those who I love? Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's just kind of how things go is when you think in terms of what you can offer rather than what you can take, that's mm -hmm. that's when the, the doors of abundance really begin to open for you. Some people, when they think about wealth, they get very focused on how can I make some money? Yeah, that's backwards. And it's backwards, isn't that's it? That's backwards. Because the money is just the receipts that you will receive. For the, for, uh, for the value that you've already created. Whatever value you're able to contribute or create or give. And that's why this focus on what is it that I have to offer is a more helpful focus and, and really a more fundamental focus. It's the starting point. That perhaps. is, that's, that's where it begins. So even though we're talking about giving back, we could even drop the back part. Just giving. <laughs> Just giving and having a mindset of, of giving and contributing and enriching the lives of other people. Now, I just thought of something, and I know that uh, I've had feedback from some of our listeners before, and I know that some of, some of the people out there are going to be thinking, well, why do I always have to make it into a business? <laughs> you know? And, sure. and the example that you just shared, you know, took it from making cakes to making cakes for your neighbors to creating a business out of that. Mm -hmm. I don't know that you have to specifically make it into a business, in order to follow this principle. 
No, you don't. What do you think about that? You don't. Um, you don't have to do that at all. That's just uh, uh, an example that's giving of, of how your thoughts begin to happen. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people just want to give... Uh, my wife, for instance, she enjoys spending time at my son's school. And she's the headroom mm-hmm. mother for the fifth grade. She's there three days a week helping all of the different fifth grade teachers. She's there uh, helping them with their field trips. Um, that's her way of giving back. She has no desire to do anything more than that. And that's completely content for her. And I'm mm-hmm. happy for her because she's happy. <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't have a cough button right there. We run this show as if it's live radio, <laughs> which is fun. I think it adds to some of the dynamics. I think a business is only one example of a context or a way to give. Exactly. But the mindset is the important thing. Yes, yes. And, you know, the. <laughs> if you need to take a drink. <laughs> I'll get one. You go right. ahead, Gary. Um, I think, uh, you know, you just, just think in terms of giving and, and uh, more than just to the church. Um, for instance, I know uh, uh, my mom's church, for example, that wanted to put a flagpole out by one of their soccer fields that was right next to it. So, so uh, mm-hmm. she gave the flagpole um my father uh he's uh big into giving to different hospitals and different research institutions and uh you know you just give um with no expectation of receiving you just give and Mm -hmm. then through the principle you don't need to receive material wealth you can receive just help just thoughts of you know hey i helped and I got a smile from someone, and that's that's mm-hmm. what it's really all about. Mm-hmm. That's that that speaks to the issue of true wealth too. I think there's still a lot of people out there who get confused about how money is wealth. Well, money is only just one of the manifestations of wealth. Yeah, money is just just numbers on a and numbers if, on a computer sitting in some bank somewhere that's all it is it doesn't change you or make you anything other than what you were before you had those numbers it's, it's mostly just digital information exactly and if people would really be honest with themselves they'd realize that they don't want money why would they want it well they want it to go exchange for something that they really want exactly right it's not the money that they want it's what they can do with it what they can receive in exchange for the money right but the money is a receipt for value they've already created in the world so realizing that the true wealth is not the money the true wealth are those things that you can't even buy with money the smile the you know the the little kids giving you a big hug the the grandmas giving you the hugs mm-hmm. that all grandmas give you that's that's what it's all mm-hmm. about and along those lines i'd like to encourage everyone who's listening to just think of a few things right now right now as you're listening to this podcast episode that you are truly grateful for some of the real money in your life and is it a is it a smile from one of your kids as you walk through the door? Is it the beauty of the sunset? Is it, whatever it is, you know, you find some things that you're grateful for. I think, Carrie, that giving back is a form of gratitude. It's a form of practicing that other powerful, important principle of gratitude. Exactly. It is. It's just, I mean, it's so important to give back and uh, just to see the smiles and and uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I went up to the uh, University of Utah to their scholarship dinner. Uh, through the Break On Foundation, we, uh, we funded some uh, scholarships up there for the College of Engineering because I'm passionate about engineers. That's becoming where you entre- started, huh? Exactly, engineers uh-huh. becoming entrepreneurs. And uh, 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 through the Break On Foundation, we, we uh, donated to the College of Engineering at the University of Utah. And uh, they invited me to go and visit uh, or to go to their um, uh, their scholarship dinner. And mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. the three principals of Breakon went there, and it was, the money wasn't the issue. It was seeing those young kids, and they had their parents and grandparents just thanking us, and this is so great and wonderful, and and it's unbelievable that you can do this type of stuff. 
and just hearing the kids with their great ideas that they wanted to do. And, and the one that really struck home was uh, uh, one of the recipients was there with his wife, and, and they're a, a young couple and expecting their first baby. And he said, you know, your scholarship's going to pay for our baby. And, uh, you know, it's like, how, how can you put a number on that? That's, that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, mm-hmm. was, it was a great time, great event, great school. Um, but that was really the icing on the cake. That was just, I mean, that's mm-hmm. seeing, that's seeing the smile on your kids. That's the seeing the smile of your wife when she, you know, when she gives you that special smile. That's what it's all mm-hmm. about. Carrie, I'm wondering what you would say to some of our listeners who might be stuck or who might be convinced that, that they don't have wealth, that they don't have an abundant life. What would you say to them? What would you want them to know? I would like them to uh to get some help with that thought process. Um, you know, it's it's Wait more... a minute. Don't they need help with their checkbook, with no. their finances? No. You said thought process. What do you mean? Yeah, it's it's the mindset that needs to change there. Um everyone is wealthy. You just need to to start thinking about it and and thinking in terms of what do I have that I can actually give and it, as soon as you think you don't have something is when you need to start looking deeper. Um, I would I would suggest that they come and, and talk with you and Ross here at Creation Tree Coaching so you can help them get that mindset going in the right direction. You know, I appreciate that you said that <laughs> because here this is sometimes just what you have to offer is so close to you that you don't even see it so much or don't even think about it. That's exactly what we do at Creation Tree Coaching is to help people with their thought processes. I had a thought, though, as you were saying that. You've probably been accused of this before, Carrie. If you haven't, let me be the first. Oh, that's easy for you to say because you're already wealthy. (laughs) You heard that one before? I've heard that before, but... uh, Do you have an answer to it? Well, I I would like them to uh, just recognize that that that's not always been the case. And... uh, uh, back in those days, I hadn't heard of Creation Tree Coaching. I hadn't heard of you. Um, what I did is I went and bought uh, Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, for $15 and uh, started reading that. And that's where I started. And that was what really started mm-hmm. to change my thinking in terms of when you when he was a child working for no money. Um, mm, I love that know, example. What is it that he could do? So you just start thinking of when you don't have money, what is it that you can do? And that's that's mm-hmm. where I got started. This And, and I'm glad you, you mentioned Kiyosaki again, too, because one of the things that, that was so powerful to me about reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad is the point that he made about getting your thinking in line. Yeah, exactly. And I know I'm not using his wording there, but he would be he would be considered to be probably one of the foremost gurus in terms of financial education for the masses. Wouldn't you agree? I agree. I I love Robert Kiyosaki and his books. And uh, uh, we went and saw him in seminar last year in in April or May. And uh, I actually spoke with him. And uh, Mm -hmm. uh, it was just, it was unbelievable. Well, the the point that, that he makes there is... To get in charge of your thinking first, and all of the other stuff is going to happen and follow as you get in charge of that. Yeah, yeah, he does. And, and then he, he's big into thinking like, thinking opposite and thinking of other folks and, and uh, you know, just not thinking in the way normal people think. Just start changing your thinking and, and then the world of abundance will begin to open up for you. So these people who are feeling stuck don't need to fix anything on their economic portfolio until they get their mind straight. Exactly right. Stick with us. we got one more second. If you have a pile of books you want to read growing faster than the pile of books you have read, Abundant Reading Systems course can help you. You'll learn a skill that allows you to read much more rapidly and you can retain more of what you read. I was actually quite surprised at my original benchmark this morning. To be able to do as well as I did, I almost tripled my benchmarks uh, and increased my comprehension, so I feel good about what I learned. Abundant Reading Systems brings you an all-new single-day speed reading workshop where you'll learn the principles behind effective reading and double your current reading speed. 
guaranteed. This belief started to grow inside of me that I thought, you know, I can really do this. I can read, you know, as fast as I let myself read. And uh, ended up doubling my time, my speed reading time, which was really good. At the end of the day, I feel like I'm leaving feeling empowered. Register now for this event by calling 435-669-1206. That's 669-1206. Abundant Reading Systems. Reading at the speed of imagination. 669-1206. This is Dr. Paul, the shrink who expands your life. I'm so glad that you've joined me for the Live on Purpose podcast. Please visit my website, drpaul.org. There you can subscribe to my weekly e-zine, Empower. Browse the events page to get connected with what's coming up or pick up some CDs or other great products. I also want to point you toward our sponsors, creationtreecoaching.com and producerretreats.com. This is Ross Kellen Moore of Creation Tree Coaching, and I've got two questions for you. Who are you? What do you want? You see, I've figured out that you and I can absolutely create anything that we really want. But to do that, we've got to be absolutely clear on who we really are and what we really want. So what do you want? More financial abundance? More fulfilling relationships? A higher level of health and fitness? How about finding your work that allows you to create massive value for others in the way that you love most? Welcome to Creation Tree Coaching. We are the world's premier provider of abundance, education, and resources. We are here to help you create the life you really love. Begin now at creationtreecoaching.com. Check out our live teleseminar classes and podcasts. Get to know our coaches and schedule a coaching session. Explore training for your business and employees. Welcome to Creation Tree Coaching and a whole new world that you create on purpose. Carrie, we're up on our last segment here. The time flies, doesn't it? It has. It's been fun. It has been fun. I'm glad that you came to uh, share some of your insights about all of this. And it's been fun to, to have this discussion about just the mindset behind wealth and abundance is one that that is uh, characterized at least in part by generosity and giving and and philanthropy and just this idea that there's there's abundance so share it yeah yeah just just give give what you got you know there's there's more than what's just in the Mm -hmm. checkbook and of course what's in the checkbook helps too but just give what you got as people start to do that they will begin to experience some of the abundance that they're missing right now so I like what you said earlier when you said, well, the time to start giving is as soon as you realize you haven't been. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's... And at what level, too? Because I think everybody's giving at some level. But give until it starts to, f- until, until you can you start, feel it. Until you start to feel it. And that's when you're giving enough. And until you don't feel it anymore, then it's time to give some more. Then it's time to give some more. This requires a lot of faith. Yeah, it does. But but the principle is still there. So it's it's the faith in the principle. Do you believe in gravity? Do you believe in this principle? Because the principle is there. So mm-hmm. you know, it's it's that's and the way to test it. It will act on you whether you whether you believe it or not, whether you agree with it or not, whether you're aware of it or not. It's already acting in your life. Yeah. So I think part of in in summary of what we've talked about here today. If you are experiencing scarcity and captivity, one of the ways to get out of that is to start giving more. Start giving and contribute meaningfully of yourself. And uh, don't think that it's all about your stuff. Stuff is part of it. But really what you have to give is yourself. And that human life value that we talked about earlier. It's a powerful concept. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's it's one that it's definitely fundamental to uh, changing your mindset. Hey, before I let you go today, there's a couple of things that I want to highlight because you and I have found a a way that we want to give an opportunity to some people. Um, a while back, I learned how to do speed reading, <laughs> and you've heard the ads on on Live on Purpose Radio. 
Well, Carrie, you'd like to learn that too, wouldn't you? I would love to speed read. My the stack of books is about two feet tall right now that I need to start getting through, and it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a slow boat the way I'm going right now. And and uh, everyone just tells me, hey, this is a great book, and so I'll buy it. Mm-hmm. And uh, hey, here's another one, and I'll buy it while I'm still halfway through, you know, a hundred page book that I started mm-hmm. <laughs> that I started a little while ago. So with with time getting getting uh uh tight and me wanting to spend as much time with the family reading is definitely just one of those things that that's high on my list but tends to slide and uh mm-hmm. and I definitely want to make sure that when I get that time that I'm that I'm uh quite productive with it and so yeah that's why mm-hmm. we've asked we've asked uh you to get involved with us to to help me plus the students uh, well, learn some speed reading you and I have a a similar characteristic I've noticed and that is when you want something you go make it <laughs> And uh, when I first wanted to do speed reading, I uh, I looked around for what was available. And I knew that uh, David Hinton, with Abundant Reading Systems, had a great course. And he lives down in southern Utah. And uh, he was also on our cruise last year, by the way. Yeah. This is part yeah, of the and his wife, Jerry. production that happens when you get great people together. But um, uh, I decided, hey, if I'm going to have one, I better bring it in. And so I got together with David and we started a course here in Utah County. He was gracious enough to come up and and provide some training. And I was so thrilled with what I was able to do personally that I've decided to team up with them to uh, create this opportunity for other people too. And you've jumped on that wagon, Carrie. We're uh, co-sponsoring an event that's coming up on November 16th. For those of you who are within reach of Salt Lake City, we would love to have you on board for a one-day course. It's a single-day course. We're going to start at 8 in the morning, go till about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. And I have to warn you, folks, it's brutal. <laughs> now, I say that meaning it's an intense day. But the guarantee is that you're going to at least double your reading speed with equal or greater comprehension. And that's a pretty good guarantee. That That is, and that's amazing because... Uh... Uh, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm a slow reader, but it just Mm -hmm. seems like when you have a book like Atlas Shrugged or you have the creature from Jekyll Island, I mean, those are some Mm -hmm. pretty, pretty healthy books. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I definitely love to bring those types of books into my library. Um, but Mm -hmm. I have to say they have been intimidating and I'm looking forward to them not being quite so intimidating. And you want to have them as part of your mental library, not just sitting on your shelf. Exactly. Right. Let's get them inside somehow. And that's why we're creating this opportunity. I just wanted to give our listeners a heads up to that. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. You can get connected to that through a couple of ways. You can, uh, you can go to abundantreadingsystems.com and, uh, there should be some information there to help point you to our to our uh, February, excuse me, not February, November 16th event that's coming up quickly. If uh, You can always send me an email to drpaul at liveonpurposeradio.com and we'll get you hooked up. Carrie, there are other things coming up though and I want to, to give you a few minutes to highlight a few of these things that are happening. I mentioned earlier that you're, you're working to provide educational opportunities for students and one of the things that, that I know you're passionate about is liberty. And the concept of liberty. Uh, in fact, you've secured a copy, one of the original copies, as I as I recall. To, correct yes, me if I'm wrong. Of yes. the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, that was that was quite a quite a time in the company. We uh, we got a an original William Stone copy of the Declaration of Independence uh, mm. printed under authority of John Quincy Adams. Uh, it's kind of funny because people say, oh, "Well, wow. what do you mean an original copy?" An original uh-huh. copy, uh-huh. but uh, that's what they made. The original uh, had plates made, and then they made two hundred copies of the original that were sanctioned by John Quincy Adams. And uh, I have one of those two hundred. Of those two hundred original, thirty-six are known to exist. Two west of the Mississippi, and I have one of those two. Oh wow! So they lost track of a bunch of them, yeah, or they were destroyed during the war, or whatever. Right. But uh, here's one, and and remember, folks, they did not have photocopy machines back then there was no digital reproduction of any kind at the time and so they had to actually produce these uh in a way that uh that was fairly limited they couldn't mass produce those things back then right 
right? And that it's what's funny is since then, all the copies that you see on the internet and in bookstores are copies of the William Stone copy. Um, so you know oh, okay. when you're looking at it and you you download it on the internet, um, it has that tannish orange background. That's mm-hmm. the William Stone copy, um, and, oh, okay. and that's one of the original two hundred that that you know you can buy now for eleven dollars at at some bookstore. Mm-hmm. Well, you've you've used this as an asset to give back. Yes. So you share this with people and you put it on display and you bring it to certain events that you're hosting. You've got a a program called Project Liberty. Can you tell us just a little bit about Project Liberty? Sure. Project Liberty is just uh, one of my ways of giving back. Uh, I have a lot of folks who uh, who just want to learn how to do what I do. And uh, uh, one of the ground rules when I was building Project Liberty is, is I'm not going to hold any secrets. Uh, I'm going to show them everything I know and make everything available to them. And so we... Uh, started a class back in September, and we purposely kept the class small. Um, you know, our philosophy is let's provide a lot of value to a few people um, and make sure that our customer service can support uh, what we're doing before we try to, to grow it any bigger. Um, mm-hmm. And we can see that, that the 10 we've got, we feel fairly comfortable that we're handling them. We've gotten good feedback from them, and uh, we're getting ready to launch another uh, class here starting the beginning of the year. Oh, wow. So if people are interested in, in getting connected with that, what's the best place to, to find you or what it is that you're doing? Where would you direct them to go? That would be to our, uh, got independence.com website. Oh, um, kind of like the got milk commercial. Yeah, exactly like got that. Independence.com. Right. And, uh, on that website, they'll be able to see what's coming up, how they can get involved with that. Yeah. With the whole Project Liberty thing. Yep. Wow. And, you know, I love that concept. What if we could all just declare our own personal independence? Yeah, and it's kind of funny. We we wanted to to uh, have our tagline, declare your independence, or declare your independence today, because we have a declaration of independence. Uh, mm-hmm. But the patent office told us that, uh, you know, we probably ought not do that. So, so oh. uh, that's why we have Project Liberty. That's why we have Got Independence. Um but yeah, it's it's working and it's we've got great feedback. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I personally know, well, most of those students actually, uh, because I'm helping to provide some of the instruction and the coaching. In fact, we've got another event coming up right after the speed reading event. It's a Saturday symposium, and this is this is an example of some of what you're doing to try to spread the word, and that's coming up on the 17th of November, where you're going to be providing some. Uh, information about creating and leveraging businesses. Yeah. Did I we, get that right? Yeah. Yeah. We're just, uh, um, like I said, the topics are, are varied. They're not just in one asset class. Um, we find a lot of people are starting an LLC, but they don't know why. And so we're going to talk to them about all the different corporate structures. We're going to have our banker there that, that tells, uh, you know, a banker's perspective of what he's looking for, for businesses, how you can, how you can actually leverage businesses from a banker's perspective. Uh, we're mm-hmm. going to have our lawyer there to to answer any questions about different entity structures, and it's going to be a good it's going to be a great time. Mm. I'm looking forward to that too because I'll be presenting uh, for a portion of that meeting, and I've you know here's Doctor Paul. You know I don't have any expertise in business and <laughs> finance and all of that stuff, but you know what? What I bring to the table here is just helping people with that mindset thing. We've talked about that a little bit today. You get your mind in the right frame, and you can do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's amazing. You've got other events coming up, too. And I know you've got a website, com. That's B-R-A-Y hyphen C-O-N-N dot com. Yeah. And there's a lot of information there. Um, is there a place they could email or um, or contact you if they have further questions? Sure. Well, our Braycon website is just our corporate you know, our corporate website and it's, it's kind of an upper level website. Mm -hmm. And for our break on advisors is, is a branch of break on Inc. And that website is gotindependence.com. Okay. And so, you know, whatever you want to look at, look at both websites, but, uh, you know, our, our giving back portion is the Mm -hmm. gotindependence.com. And, and, uh, we also have kids for freedom. That's another big project we have going on. Mm -hmm. Um, we're trying to, to get the declaration out to, to the young kids in the communities the and to the schools and the principals 
just so they mm. can uh, introduce that. So it's we got a lot of great stuff going on. So either of those websites, Braycon.com with a hyphen in the middle, or GotIndependence.com. That's how you can get connected with Carrie Valerio, the Braycon companies, Project Liberty, and all of those exciting things that are going on. Carrie, thank you for joining me here today. Thanks, great to be here, Dr. It's been a pleasure. We'll catch you next time on Live on Purpose.